What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here, and the the time has finally come, and a lot of people have been waiting for my prediction on this game. They said, um, someone said on the live stream yesterday that I was holding on to my score prediction like my last $5, and I definitely was. I've been really going back and forth on this game. You can find some more analysis on our article on our website later this afternoon, and on top of that, we had a full FCS Week 2 preview over two hours of live stream content with live calls so y'all can go check out. It's the previous video on our um, on our channel. We also have interviews with um, or press conferences from Coach Prime and Eddie George, both talking about the upcoming game against ten, uh, uh, in the Southern Heritage Classic this weekend in Memphis, man. But it's time to preview this game. It's one that has been really, really talked about after some so, some really nice performances by both of these teams. Dominant one by Jackson State beating Florida A&M last weekend and just absolutely dominating them. 59-3 to while Tennessee State went up to, to a top 15 Eastern Washington team on the road and had a great performance losing by seven points. But Tennessee State leads the all-time series 17-11, to but Jackson State, Won last year's matchup 38 to 16. Jackson State coming off an 11 and 2 record last year was picked to win the SWAC East, while TSU 5 and 6 last year, 3 and 3 in the OVC, was picked to finish fourth in the OVC. Even though on my show, I picked them to win the OVC this year, and I still think that is a very likely possibility, regardless of what happens these first two weeks. I think the OVC has a lot of teams that were a little bit overrated. UT Martin looks good, but I think right now you could say Tennessee State is right in the thick of things in the OVC. Now, let's get to a little bit of the keys of the game, man. There's no, uh, we, we spent a lot of time on talking about the history of the matchup and everything on other episodes. Keys to the game. Let's start with Jackson State here. Let the offense run through Shador Sanders. That's the offensive key. You have depth at the wide receiver spot. Offensive line looks improved. You, you, have, you have a few running backs that look really good as well, but your guy is Shador Sanders, man. After the performance he put on last week, after he led this team to a SWAT championship last year, winning the Jerry Rice Award, this is Shador Sanders' team. Give him the ball and let him go. Do, and let him go do what he does, man. And this is a Tennessee State team that gave up over 350 yards passing last week. Shador Sh Sh Sanders should be the entire offensive game plan. Let him pick the secondary apart and let him be the leader of this offense. And that's a simple key for the offense. Now, on the defensive side, is stop the run. But the, the keys I really want to talk about are gap and tackling discipline. What I mean by that is the linebackers and the defensive linemen have to know their keys. They have to be in the correct gaps at the right time and bounce the running back where the flow of the where the flow of the defense is, is going to be able to make a play. You cannot try to do too much, get out of your gaps, because Devon Starling will hit a hole and will take it to the house for a B play. So you have to be very, very disciplined in your in in, in terms of where you are and in what gap you're you are responsible for and just allow the linebackers to go make plays. And if you're the linebackers and or even the a defensive lineman that gets in the backfield to make a play, you have to tackle the ball carrier we saw too many times last week Devon Starling is excellent in making people miss an open space and was able to break some tackles against Eastern Washington last week which led to big plays same for some of the wide receivers too tackling is going to be extremely important for Jackson State if you come out of this game missing a bunch of tackles and allowing Tennessee State to take advantage of that is going to be a long day in Memphis we saw they were able to break a few tackles and it led to points Jackson State's gap in tackling discipline is going to be key in stopping this offense and especially stopping the run with Starling and Draylon Ellis, who made some people miss in the open field as well with his legs. Now, for Tennessee State, the offense is simple. Start fast and establish your pace on the game. And what I mean by that is we know what Jackson State is going to want to do. They're going to want to spread you out and allow Shador to, to just put the ball where it needs to go, and they're going to walk down the field just like they did against Florida A&M. You cannot get behind in this game. So what I mean by start fast is you cannot find yourself down by 14 to 21 nothing early. This needs to be a, and I said this last time on the live stream, you need to get points on your first drive, whether that's three, whether that's seven, six, it doesn't matter. Get on the board. 
that zero needs to come off the board quickly because if it doesn't and you get a quick three and out, your defense is already going to be feeling the pressure and things are going to get out of hand very, very quickly, similar to how it did against Florida A&M last week. You have to establish yourself early. They did it last week. I believe it was 19 first quarter points last weekend for Tennessee State. You have to get seven. You have to get something on the board on your first drive, and you have to score early, man, and keep and keep your team's morale and keep that team energy up because you cannot fall into the same trap that Florida A and M fell into last week. Now, the other thing is, you have to win the turnover battle. Last week. That was really the only reason Tennessee State didn't win that game. You have to win the turnover battle, and you can. And Jackson State's defense is too athletic, and they have too many playmakers to allow you to turn the ball over because it's not just going to be a normal turnover like we saw last week. They're taking it to the house. Pick six and a fumble recovery, and they made plays on special teams. You cannot turn the football over if you're if you're Tennessee State, and you have to force some turnovers. They did a great job. Of forcing, of forcing some opportunistic opportunities last weekend against Eastern Washington. Florida a was not able to do that last week against Jackson State. If Tennessee State has any chance to win this game, you have to win the turnover battle. You have to force Jackson State to turn the football over, and you have to be damn near perfect on the offensive side of the football to win this game. So you have to start fast, establish your pace, which is run the football, Shorten this game up and make sure your defense is fresh late into the game and you have to win the turnover battle. Those are the keys to the game for both of these teams, in my opinion. Now, the quarterback spotlight is something I didn't have on the episode last week, but this is something that is really, really important this week. Shador Sanders versus Draylon Ellis. This is the third matchup in in, in the careers of these guys, dating back to when they were even younger. I talked to Draylon's dad, man, and he – uh. He said Draylon wants this one. If I'm pretty sure, I think Shador is up 2-0 on Draylon right now in one-on-ones. But last week, look at what Shador did, man. 87% completion percentage for 323 passing yards and five tubs. That was an excellent performance, man. It was a clinic. Started out 17 for 17. They built this offense perfectly around Shador Sanders. You are going to have to find a way to stop him if you're Tennessee State. Now, last week he completed a pass to 12 different wide receivers against Florida A&M. He was efficient. He understood the offense, and his command of the offense is huge, and I want to see how that evolves in week two. They're supposed to have some more pieces back this week. I want to see how his pocket presence and command of the offense continues to evolve as we get throughout the season. It was an excellent week one. I want to keep seeing him build on that, and I want to see if Tennessee State's able to get some pressure, has his pocket presence matured, from last season at times. And the offensive line did a, did, a, did a pretty good job last week protecting him. I believe they only allowed two sacks last week, one by Isaiah Landon, one by Major, the, the linebacker on a blitz. I want to see if they do get pressure, is he able to stand in the pocket and make the throws? And, and we're going to see, man, those are two things I'm looking for this week, man. But he is coming off an excellent performance. And if he follows it up with anything similar to what he had last week, that Walter Payton award lead is looking very, very nice for Shador Sanders going into week three against Grambling State. Now, on the other side, Draylon Ellis. Ah, oh, man, this this guy, I think, has, could be special, man. I've heard a lot of people have some really wild takes on this guy's talent. And for me, I said before the season, I thought him and Hodge Malik Williams were the two best quarterbacks on the schedule this season for – uh, this Jackson State defense. And last week, he had a solid outing, man, against a really good Eastern Washington team, completed over 63% of his passes, 257 through the air, two passing touchdowns, had over 80 yards rushing, rushing and one rushing touchdown. But the one thing I want to see Ellis evolve, uh, uh, evolve and show he can do this week is throw the deep ball. On passes 20-plus yards down the field, man, he was one for seven, 41 yards and an interception. That was like about a 42.4 pro football focus grade in terms of the advanced analytics. He's going to have to try to find a way to push the ball down the field because if he can't efficiently push the ball down the field, Jackson State's going to load the box and it's going to get real hard for this Tennessee State offense to move the football. He is going to have to show some improvement from last week moving the football deep down the field in those 20 plus yard range in that in the 20 to 30 to 40 plus yard range man he's going to have to be more efficient and that's just how it is and that turnover sticks out you have to be able to make this Jackson State defense respect your deep ball 
That way, Devon Starling can get loose, you know, in, 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 from the backfield spot. But the three keys for Draylon Ellis, efficiency, r- rushing threat, and limit turnovers. Got to be efficient. He was solid last week, man, 63% completion percentage, which is which was an upgrade from what we saw from him at Austin P. at times. He's got to be a rushing threat, which we know he is, 80 yards rushing and a rushing touchdown. You've got to put pressure on this Jackson State defense. You Make them take someone from coverage. Make them take away a pass rusher and use them as a spa. And if you're the defensive ends for Jackson State, you cannot let – Traylon Ellis get loose out of the backfield because he is an explosive play waiting to happen. And it's a threat that last week they didn't have facing Jeremy Musa from Florida A&M. So that that's going to be key. And then of course, I already talked about, you cannot turn the football over some unfortunate turnovers last week. Traylon Ellis has to play a cleaner game this week. If Tennessee state looks to pull off the upset now for players to watch for me, it starts off with Dallas Daniels. I said last week, or not even last week, this offseason, I thought Dallas Daniels is going to be the number one receiver for Jackson State this year. Five catches, 59 yards, and a touchdown last week. The three things for him that I think make him a special player is his experience, his route running, and his versatility, his ability to line up at different spots on the outside. He can play slot. He, he, he can play the X. It doesn't matter. He can line up in many different spots, and he has the matchup advantage. I want to see him, and by versatility, I also mean I think he's the most consistent route runner at all three levels, where he can be a deep threat, he can be that underneath guy in the slot, and he can be the mid-range guy similar to a Keith Corbin. And I compared him to a Keith Corbin for this Jackson State offense this year. The number one question this weekend is, in a loaded wide receiving room, can Daniels establish himself as the number one target for Shador? I've said, in my opinion, Dallas Daniels is the only receiver that's really a threat to go over a thousand yards this year in this Jackson in this Jackson State offense. I think he's the only guy that can establish himself at all three levels and be that consistent threat from twenty to twenty. Got a lot of red zone threats. Malachi Wobbin when he comes back, Shane Hooks, Trevante Rucker has that ability. Dallas Daniels is your every down wide receiver to go make catches. This week and this weekend, he's got to establish himself as the number one target. And with a Tennessee State secondary that gave up some plays, especially when they got lost in space, Dallas Daniels needs to be the guy to take advantage of that. And so that's why he's a player to watch for me. Now, Aubrey Miller is my pick. Last week, it was Niles Gaddy. The linebacker spot is going to be so important this week. Last week, he had five tackles, a forced fumble, and or, or a fumble recovery and a touchdown. Can Miller perform well in open space? That's the question. That's why he's a player to watch. Everybody's critique of Aubrey Miller, all the scouts, everything is when Aubrey's in space, can he cover and can he play well in space? We're going to find out because with this RPO game, with Devon Starling coming in, they're going to put Aubrey Miller in one-on-one situations with Ellis and Starling running the read option, the RPO game, and just out in the pass game because Starling will go out for passes. So the question for me becomes how well does he perform there if he shows improvement this is a this is a draft stock go get that bad type game for Aubrey Miller and if he's a and he's my number one threat to make plays against a run for Jackson State Devontae Davis and 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 I believe Katron Evans is back this week and those defensive tackles play your role take up space and allow Aubrey to go get the ball carrier Aubrey Miller this game with the way Tennessee State is going to play should have eight to 12 tackles this game and he should be the guy that at the end of the day if Jackson State wins this game we look and say Aubrey Miller is the MVP on this defense this is a huge game for Aubrey Miller he's a player to watch because of this run first nature of this Tennessee State team which Florida A&M really didn't have the ability to run the football very well and then once he got out of hand they just started dropping back and got desperate but Aubrey Miller is going to have to play a much bigger role this weekend in my opinion now for Tennessee State it starts with their number one threat. It's Devon Starling. I already said I think he's the best running back right now in HBCU football, and I stand on that, man. You just watched last week, and he left no questions, man. This is a, this is a freshman All-American and All-OVC guy. 25 carries, 207 yards, and a rushing touchdown last week. And he did what he, he averaged over five yards per carry in the A-gaps. Which is why, which is why I picked Aubrey Miller. But I was looking at some advanced analytics before this episode. His ability to bounce the ball outside and get loose in open space is going to be a big thing to watch this weekend. When he bounced, when when he bounced the ball outside the edge, 
which you have your A gaps, your B gaps, your C gaps are off tackle. This is outside the tight end. This is bouncing it way outside. He had eight carries for 105 rushing yards and had four yards of 10 or more yards last week against Eastern Washington. And there, that's where the missed tackles come in. When he's one-on-one with a player in open space, he has the ability to go make a big play. Devon Starling is going to be the key for explosive plays for this Tennessee State offense. You have to have explosive plays. Florida a and was not able to have any explosive plays until the game was over. Devon Starling is the guy that has to go make those explosive plays happen. His ability to bounce things outside, his ability to run between the tackles is going to be key, and this is going to put a lot of pressure on the Tennessee State offensive line to do their job and a lot of pressure for Aubrey Miller and that linebacking core to be disciplined in their run in their run game and their run in their run stopping efforts. But Devon Starling is the sole player to watch for Tennessee State on the offensive side of the ball. They go as he goes. If he has a big game, they're going to be right in this one and have a great chance to win it. Now, on the defensive side, I could have went with a few people. That There's a few secondary guys that, um, you know, I, I think could, could be could be picked. But for me, the number one thing you have to do to beat Jackson State is make Shador uncomfortable. You have to get consistent pressure on Shador Sanders or you don't have a chance. If he can sit back in the pocket and pick you apart, you're done. There's, there, there's no there's nothing you can do and last year come at Austin P Terrell Allen was it was was one of the guys that made Austin P a threat in the front four 30 36 total tackles 11 and a half tackles for loss five sacks almost 10 quarterback hurries for the season he has to be the guy he has he has a lot of experience he's been the guy to lead talented defensive lines he has to get pressure and play in Jackson State's backfield he didn't have his best game last week. Um, in, in some of the limited action that he played, Terrell Allen is going to have to be the leader, man. You have Terrell at the defensive tackle spot. You have some guys on the outside to play with Allen. But for me, Allen came in as the all-conference transfer. The guy, everyone, including myself, was talking up. He's got to prove everything that he proved to Austin P is the same at Tennessee State. He's going to have to be in Shador's face all game long. By the end of the game, Shador Sanders should be going to the sidelines and say, what are we doing with number nine? And last week, the offensive line did a great job at pretty much shutting down Isaiah Land, only held him to one sack. Terrell Allen, even if it doesn't wind up in two, three sacks, get a sack and be in Shador's face all game long. And then when he gets doubled, someone else has to create an opportunity. Get pressure on Shador Sanders, and that's why Terrell Allen is a key and this and this Tennessee State defensive line did a pretty great job against the run. If you cannot allow Jackson State to get the run and the pass game going, that is a recipe for disaster. And so that that's going to be a key this weekend as well. But Terrell Allen, Devon Starling, my players to watch with Tennessee State. Now that you know I've heard some crazy predictions. Um I, I think it was uh T called in yesterday and, and said it was like 60 something to like 10 or something like that for Jackson State. I've had some absolute blowout predictions. Um, this is our game FCS game of the week. Comment your score predictions below. Enter our Venmo $50 giveaway if you predict the winner and the correct score. Um, but we didn't have anyone win last week. We had someone predict the correct score in the Ohio State Notre Dame game, but it was flipped. Um, so uh, in one of the games, he, he he predicted the correct score, but it was the wrong team winning. So it was close. But man, I don't see this one being a blowout. Man, I stay, I, I stand on my on my opinion that I thought Tennessee State was a way bigger threat to Jackson State than FAMU. A lot of people didn't believe me. Uh, I had Jackson State by double digits last week. I don't think anyone predicted fifty nine to three. Uh, outside of I think y'all said Isaiah Bolden did on the pregame show. That's cool. I got Jackson State winning this one 35-27. I'm going to be in Memphis this weekend. The rain, I think, does impact this game a little bit. Listen, I always bring the rain, and that favors Tennessee State. I don't. I, I think Tennessee State is going to be able to run the football. I think they have the ability to run the football on almost anyone they play. But to me, the guy in the picture right, right there next to my score prediction is the guy who wins this game. I think Shador Sanders does a little bit. Does just enough, man, to get Jackson State out of here with the win. I'm worried about the secondary consistently stopping him and this and this deep wide receiving core. I think Tennessee State makes it interesting early, man, but Jackson State gets one off late. 
35-27, Jackson State over Tennessee State, man. An, a, an eight-point win for the Tigers, man. 2-0. and oh. I had them number nine in my FCS Top 25 ballot that I submitted for the FCS Stats Perform poll. But I do think Draylon Ellis and Devon Starling, um, how the men at the wide receiver spot are going to make this one an interesting game. I, I don't see this one being a blowout like it was against FAMU. But, hey, we'll see, man. This is going to be a great test for both teams. But I think this one's a close one in Memphis, man, especially with the weather. Jackson State 35, Tennessee State 27. Like I said, comment your score predictions below. Check out all our week two content on our YouTube channel, man. I'll be headed to Memphis tomorrow, man. So if you see me around, I'll be I'll be working, be working the sidelines, man. Say what's up. I look forward to meeting some of you guys in Memphis at the game, man. But I got Jackson State 35, Tennessee State 27. Comment your score predictions below and stay tuned for more content right here on the Blue Bloods, man. But until next time, the Blue Bloods are out.